effort. This is a video I have been wanting to make for a long time and it is very much overdue. This is a subject I can speak on. I've been coaching kids for many years. Last year alone, I did over 100 clinics all over the country. This year, I'm averaging about five clinics a month and I've coached travel teams in the past. From what I see now, a lot of athletes are not giving 100% effort and coaches and parents are going along with it. Coaches and parents, I'll get to in a second. Athletes, I wanna to talk to you. Too many times in my experience doing clinics, coaching travel ball teams, I am seeing girls giving less than 100%, and there are more girls giving less than 100% than there are girls giving 100%. That is a problem. We think we can just show up to practice, go 50%, and then get to a game and be great. You're wrong. You are dead wrong. It doesn't work that way. Now, you might get lucky. You might be going 50% at practice. You go to a tournament, and one of your games, you go two for three. Fantastic, but you're not going to be consistent. Something that I'm always preaching to the girls I coach is effort is non-negotiable for me. I am not gonna allow you to be on the field with me and go 50%. I don't wanna see lazy, I don't wanna see disrespectful, walking on and off the field, going 50% through drills. That doesn't fly with me and it shouldn't fly with you. I'm 100% confident if I were to ask you face to face, do you wanna be great? You would say absolutely. But what's frustrating as a coach is to see you giving less than 100% effort at practice going to a game and of course you're looking the same, you're looking sloppy, you're looking lazy, you're not fielding the ball, you're not hitting the ball. You do that, but then you start whining and then you start complaining and as a coach, that is so frustrating. Because me, as a coach, I say, I don't know who you think you are to where you think you can go 50% at practice and then get to a game and be fantastic. It doesn't work that way. But it's so frustrating to hear you whine and complain when you are not giving it your all at practice. And I always say, if you wanna be average, if you wanna be below average, that's on you. But I highly doubt your teammates appreciate that. This is not an individual sport. You you have let's say 12 other girls on your team and they're counting on you and when they see you at practice goofing off going 50 percent and then getting to a game looking the same that's frustrating don't be that teammate i don't care if you're on the best travel ball team in the nation i don't care if you're a rec player and i don't care your age what i care about as a coach is that you are giving me your 100 percent every single day at practice and if you don't want to give your best effort you have no right to go to a game and start whining complaining if you mess up or whining and complaining if you're sitting the bench. And I wanna be clear here, as a coach, what I always tell my girls, I will never ever be mad at you if you are going all out and you make an error or if you strike out, that is gonna happen. Even if you give 100% effort every single practice, you're gonna make errors and you're gonna strike out. But if you stay consistent at practice and you are always giving 100%, I promise you, you're gonna be consistent. And listen, I understand softball might not be your number one sport, that's fine. I played three sports in high school. I played basketball, softball, volleyball. I did not love basketball. I didn't love it really at all. I did it because my friends were on the team. However, you would never catch me showing up to practice giving less than 100% because I would never do that to my teammates. That's just who I am. I'm not gonna show up and go less than 100% because again, I committed to this team. My teammates are depending on me. I wanna be great. I know I don't like basketball, but I wanna win. Of course I wanna win. So if softball's not your number one, that's fine. If you're doing volleyball, basketball, gymnastics, whatever you are doing, you should always be going 100%. On to my coaches. And coaches, this is gonna sound harsh, but your athletes are a reflection of you. I have the privilege of being able to travel all around the country and work with a bunch of different travel teams and rec teams. I can tell immediately the coaches who demand respect and demand effort. I can also immediately tell the coaches who don't demand respect and who don't preach effort. This is where I get really fired up is let's say I'm going to a clinic and they're 10 years old. They're walking on and off the field, they're being disrespectful, they're not looking at me when I'm talking and they're giving less than 100% at our stations. It's hard to get completely frustrated with them because they don't know any better. Their coaches aren't demanding respect. They're not demanding that you go 100% because if you don't go 100%, you're not playing in the game. So they don't know any better and it is our job as coaches to help mentor them. Our job is to push them to be the best possible person that they can be. So let's forget about softball. Who cares if you are a good athlete? I don't care about that. What I care about is that you're a good human, that you're always giving me 100% and you're respectful. Kids know when they can get away with something. For me, at my clinics, we start off rough. Maybe they're being disrespectful, they're lazy, whatever it may be, we start that, but I nip that in the bud real quick because they know eventually that doesn't fly with me. By the end of the clinic, they're listening, they have good eye contact, they're hustling, they're not going less than 100%.
And I understand you are gonna have a handful of athletes who no matter what you do, they're not gonna give 100% or they're gonna be disrespectful. I totally understand that. But what I am seeing and the clinics that I'm going to, more kids are being lazy than they are giving 100%. That's a problem. And I have had coaches come up to me who are like, hey, I don't know how to go about this. And most of them are males. They're dads who are coaching their daughter's team. They're like, I have never had to coach girls before. And I agree, girls and boys are different. Girls are a little more emotional. It is what it is. You have to build our confidence up in order for us to play well. You can do all of that. You can be our best hype man. You can build us up while still demanding 100% effort. And that's where I feel a lot of coaches get lost is they feel if they are demanding excellence that they're the mean guy. And they don't wanna be the mean guy because you wanna have fun, 100%. You should be having fun. If, you don't, if you're not having fun, that's a problem. You can have a blast. You can be so positive. But if one of your girls is being disrespectful or giving less than 100% effort, you can give them a little tough love. And you can approach it in a way where you're basically telling them, hey, I got your back. I'm gonna be your biggest cheerleader. I am here to make you the best version of yourself. If you show up to my practice and you give me less than that, then yeah, I'm gonna give you some tough love because again, I know your potential and I know you can give me a lot more than you're giving me right now. Now, I'm the type of coach where if I have to repeat myself multiple times, I'm not gonna be a very nice person because now we're to the point of you're being disrespectful. And that is something that, again, I demand respect out of the gates. So coaches, you can be positive, you can have fun while still demanding excellence. It doesn't matter if they're a rec ball player or a travel ball player or their age. It is your job to help shape them to be great humans after softball. Softball is just a small, small part in their life. If you can teach them how to be a great human, they're gonna go really far in life. Now that takes me to my parents. Parents, you have to be on board with coaches. And before I go any further, I know there are very bad coaches in this world. You have coaches who are just downright mean, who are just nothing but negative and tear your athlete down. I'm not talking about those coaches. We know who those coaches are. I'm not talking about those coaches. I'm talking about the coaches who are there volunteering their time to make your athlete better. Are the coaches perfect? No, nobody's perfect. Everyone's gonna make mistakes. They might be doing something that you might think, mm, I probably wouldn't do it that way. Guess what, you're not the coach. You signed up at the beginning of season to allow your athlete to be under that coach. You gotta let the coach work with them. And I understand you're gonna have those rotten coaches, the coaches who are not in it for the right reasons. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about your everyday coach who is just there to make your athlete better. And the feedback that I get from these coaches when I go to these clinics and their girls are lazy or disrespectful, I tell them, hey, these girls are a reflection of you. What I get back from them is they agree. They're like, I know we need to be better, but what they tell me is they are afraid of parents. And they're afraid of parents because when they do give a little bit of tough love, or maybe they make their child run for being disrespectful, you have the parent immediately coming over, well, why did you do that? Why did you say this? Little Susie's so great. There's no accountability anymore, and that is a problem. It is really hard to be a good coach when you constantly have someone in your ear questioning what you're doing. I understand you're not gonna agree with every single coach and every decision they make. That's sports. You signed up your child to be under that coach. You have to trust them. Because if you don't, your child sees that. You have to hold kids accountable if we want them to be great humans after softball. If they show up late, they don't get to play. If they're disrespectful, they don't get to play. If they give less than 100% after I've had to tell them five to 10 times, they don't get to play. What I am seeing, our coaches are doing that or trying to, and then you have the parents, oh, that coach stinks. They don't know what they're talking about. Little Susie's so great, she would never. You don't want to think of your child as the lazy one, the one who was disrespectful or didn't give effort. I understand that. But if they don't do what they are supposed to, they're not going to be rewarded or they shouldn't be rewarded. And that's when you have to back up that coach because if you don't back up that coach, your child sees it and then they're not going to respect their coach. So to sum up this video, be great. Anything less than great is unacceptable.